The tower began with the usual ambience and pageantry. Its supporters swarming the gates of the state house to give the president a rousing send off for the banning for the coming out. Their cabinet ministers, led by the vice president, His Excellency Mohammed Jalla, senior government officials and religious leaders, lined up to give him farewell. The president then reviewed quarter guard conducted by a detachment of the Gambian Navy. <laughs> After boarding the ferry, President Barrow outlined the purpose of the tour and what he'll be doing in the next two weeks. It's a constitutional requirement that the president should go and dialogue with the people. Basically, that's what we are going to do, to dialogue with the people. But we are there going to have to listen to them. If we listen to them, then we know what is their problem. And we'll address them and we'll tell them what is our policies also going forward. Uh, we are very much excited, full of energy, because we think... The last meet the people too, we made a lot of promises. And I think most of our promises have taken place and most of them are ongoing. And I think we are fulfilling uh, the, the demands of the people. He arrived at Bara an hour later and was received by the governor of the North Bank region, Lamin Serikan, regional government officials and the elders. The community of Bara also came out in their numbers to receive the president as his motorcade made its way out of the busy terminal. The tour is a constitutional requirement that allows the president to go around the country at least once every year to meet Gambians. This year the president has just crossed from Banjul, where he is expected to undertake a 14-day tour of the country to hold discussions with people, meetings, 18 meetings across the country, uh, visit project sites as well as lay the foundation stone for several others. The president first drove to the Hakalan Road project, where works have been ongoing for the past three years to complete the 88-kilometer road that links communities in the Nyomis. It is one of the flagship projects of his government, and the president is keen to finish the project as a fulfillment of his promise to the people of the area. The president was briefed by the Minister of Works, Ibrahim Asila, on the status of the project, which is now expected to finish by January. The president was satisfied with the works, but urged the contractors to expedite the process, giving due consideration to quality. I am really impressed, yes. and I think the people are happy. Yes. These are social projects. Yeah. You know, their impact is immediate. Exactly. You, know, you can see it for yourself. Yeah, and our commitment is the same. Yes. We want to continue on doing infrastructural development in this country. We will not stop, definitely. Hakala Road is, uh, was one of your main priority areas. One of my main priorities, and it's a, it's a very long road. If you look at the, the, the distance, it's about 86 kilometers. Yes, definitely. And this is connecting the entire Nyomis around here. And this is a tourism area also, you know. If there is no road, obviously, you are not serious with improving tourism around this area. Exactly. You know, and there is a lot of gardening around here. Exactly. Because there are 75 culverts. There's a lot of water around this area. The entourage then proceeded to Pakao Njogu for the first meeting of the tour. After the customary welcome by the alcalde of the village, several speakers took turns to appeal for more government support in the areas of agriculture, horticulture and road infrastructure. In response to some of these appeals, the president reassured that his government is committed to the development and welfare of rural communities. He said government has subsidized the price of fertilizer to make it more affordable and accessible to farmers. And this has paid off with an expected bumper harvest in groundnut and other cereals. The president, however, urged farmers to sell their produce to the government, revealing that after consultations with stakeholders, the price for a ton of groundnut has been increased from $32,000 to $38,000 this year. He also fixed the date of the beginning of the groundnut season to the first Monday of December, in line with tradition. The president announced a number of changes related to the buying and selling of groundnut this year, disclosing that farmers will be paid on the spot by the bank to avoid credit buying, and that any trader who wishes to engage in the groundnut trade must obtain a license from the government and a customs clearance before shipping out any groundnut outside the country. These regulations, according to the president, are necessary to safeguard the welfare of the farmers and the national interest, adding that he has instructed the police to prosecute any individuals involved in the illegal trade of granite and confiscate their stock. The President also disclosed plans to increase service fees for domestic and local taxes to enable government to double its revenue collection to fund more development projects, agreeing that the country cannot depend on loans and grants to finance its development. The Gambia must end its dependence on aid and grants, President Barrow told his audience. Adding that government will review tax collection to raise more funds. He also called for concerted efforts to end illegal migration to Europe, a phenomenon that has killed hundreds of young people in recent months. 
whilst expressing his sympathy to the families of these young people. President Barrow urged the youth to desist from such perilous journeys that continue to claim more lives. The President revealed that his government has reached an agreement with Saudi Arabia to provide employment opportunities for Gambians in the kingdom, hailing it as a great opportunity that could potentially see Gambians in the Saudi job market. The President finally thanked the people of Naomi for the reception, describing it as a testament of their love and support for his government. Mamadou Diallo, DRTS.